In this video, we're going to do a quick recap of the different types of chemical reactions. Uh, so there's six different types. You'll need to be able to identify the different types based on word equations or skeleton or balanced equations. So the first type is a synthesis reaction. And synthesis really means to, uh, to build and to make. So what you do is you take two simpler reactants and then you combine them together to make one larger product. Uh, so the, the main giveaway that you have a synthesis reaction is you have two or more things coming together to make one thing. So you can see here we have A plus B producing chemically combined AB. This is one larger, more complex um, structure. Um, so we're going to go and I'm going to write out some examples, um, some specific examples of uh, synthesis reactions, just to show you what it might look like and what pattern you might need to look for. So uh, one great example is uh, just hydrogen gas plus uh, chlorine, or let's do something more familiar, plus oxygen, will produce water. So by looking at this word equation, I know this is synthesis because I have two uh, substances and they make one substance. Uh, so if I were to write this as a chemical equation, it would be H2 gas plus O2 gas produces H2O. And you could um, balance it if you um, wanted to here. So uh, we'd put a two over here and a two over here, and now it's balanced. But the point is you have two things coming together to make one. Uh, in grade 11, we're going to focus more on how to predict what these products are. Um, but right now, it's more about identifying. Let's do another example. Let's do um, calcium oxide plus water produce calcium hydroxide. So you'll see you have two reactants coming together to make one reactant. So if we want to write this out, we'd have CaO. This is ionic compound, so it's solid. Um, we're going to dump it in some water. And so if we're doing this experiment, typically the water would be liquid. And then we get calcium hydroxide. And the calcium hydroxide would be dissolved in the, um, in the water, aqueous. So this is a, a metal oxide here, metal with oxygen, combining with water, and we get calcium hydroxide. Um, so we know it's synthesis because we have two things coming together to make one, um, one more complex substance. Uh, and then if you wanted to, you could go ahead and uh, balance this as practice. Um, but typically when you have a metal oxide reacting with water, that's a common synthesis reaction that uh, will produce a base, as you can see here from the OH. Now a decomposition, is essentially just the opposite of a synthesis. We take one larger thing and break it up into two um, simpler product, two simpler products. So uh, you could just take one of these ones that we have here, any one that we did above, and um, that could be our decomposition reaction. So for example, I might take calcium hydroxide and then maybe apply some heat to it and it'll become calcium oxide plus water. So this is a breakdown. Uh, decomposition to decompose means to break. You can see here, AB, one thing becomes two things, two or more things in reality. And if you want to write a chemical equation, you could have your calcium hydroxide here, breaking down to form some calcium oxide and some water. And so that there would be our decomposition reaction. And likewise, you could just do the reverse for the synthesis of water to decompose water, and you get the same thing just in reverse. Um, so now we're going to go and take a look at displacement reactions. Uh, there's two types of displacement reactions. You have single displacement reactions and double displacement reactions. In a single displacement reaction, um, you have a compound and a lonely element. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a switch. The lonely element is going to kick um, one of the elements from the compound out. So now that element will be alone and a lonely element will be part of a compound. So they switch spots as a single displacement or single replacement. And there's generally two types of single displacement reactions. Um, there's uh, some that happen with metals and some that happen with non-metals. 
So uh, this may work. I think this will work out. So let's do, um, we'll have sodium. Well, let's do a word equation first. Sodium plus, uh, let's do magnesium chloride. And right away, you can already probably predict this is going to be a single displacement because we have a single element and a compound. So the sodium is going to kick the metal out. So this is an example of a metal kick metal out. So the metal is going to kick the metal out and be part of that compound now. So the metal that wasn't the compound, magnesium, is now alone. And then the sodium is now in the compound of sodium chloride. And then you can write out the chemical uh, equation. So here we have some sodium plus some magnesium chloride. Typically, this happens as a solution. Um, and then that's going to produce some magnesium plus some sodium chloride. But the main point is the metals switch spots. So that was a single displacement because at the end of it, you still have a compound, but one element that's still single. One element's still sing single. So there's one element with a partner and the other element does not have a partner. Uh, let's do another example. So you can also have uh, single displacement reactions with non-metals. Uh, so for example, I might have, um, let's do Cl, uh, well, I do word equation first. So we have chlorine gas reacting with, let's say, uh, potassium iodide that'll produce iodine gas, or not gas, iodine is um, solid based on Hofbrinkel, so iodine solid, plus um, now chlorine will be put with the potassium as potassium chloride. Now again, we'll focus more on um, predicting later. Right now, I just need you to get that the chlorine and the iodine switch spots. And at the end of it, there's still one that's alone and one that's in a compound, so it's single displacement. You could write this out as a chemical equation. You could balance it as well as for practice. Then we have iodine, solid, plus KCl. The states of these ones don't really matter too much right now. It's more the states here that matter because you should know these ones. But the main point is that we had a displacement of non-metals and non-metals. So you can have metal kicking a metal out, or you can have a non-metal, non-metal kick a non-metal out. And so those are two examples of single displacement reactions. Replacement happens, one thing is still alone, and the other thing's in a compound. There's also reactions called double displacement reactions, where this time you have two compounds reacting with each other. In single displacement, it was essentially one compound and an element of some sort. But here you have two compounds reacting with each other. Um, and uh, you're going to have elements within the compound switch spots. So for example, here we had A was paired with B and C was paired with D. Now we're going to have C go with B and A go with D. So they switch partners, essentially. Um, so I'm going to write one out. Uh, let's do um, silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. So already you can probably predict it's going to be a double displacement because we have two compounds. And what's going to happen is the metals are going to switch bot. The silver will switch bots with the sodium. So we'll get um, sodium nitrate plus uh, silver chloride. So uh, 
again, we had these metal switch spots. It's more apparent when you write it out with their formulas. So silver nitrate, um, usually these double re displacement reactions happen in solutions, so it's aqueous, plus sodium chloride, aqueous, produce, produces uh, sodium nitrate, NaNO3, aqueous, plus silver chloride. Now the silver chloride is going to be solid. It's actually precipitate. You'll learn that later on. You might have already learned a bit in grade 10 as well. Um, but the point is that this is a precipitate over here. Um, and since this is a, uh, and so let's just double check that we have a double displacement reaction. We had AG and NA, they switched spots. The NA is where the AG was and the AG is where the NA was. And so there we have a double displacement reaction. It's different from a single displacement because at the end, you still have two compounds. Nothing is alone. Everything is partnered up, just different partners. So you should be able to identify so far synthesis reactions if you're given equations, word or chemical. Can you classify them as synthesis or decomposition? They're essentially the opposite. You should be able to classify your your uh, displacement type of reactions based on equations given. Um, can you tell me if it's single displacement or a uh, double displacement? Uh, and there's also a special class of double displacement I quickly want to go over. Um, this relates to the acids and bases. So you can have an acid react with a base uh, and that'll produce water and salt. So uh, that's called a neutralization reaction because initially the acid um, has a uh, pH that's uh, less than 7. Remember, pH is a measure of acidity. pH less than 7 for the acid. A base is a pH more than 7. After this reaction happens, um, the products uh, have a pH that's, that's closer to 7. It might not be exactly on 7, um, but it's closer to 7. So that's how we call it neutralization, because remember, neutralization is, you know, a, is, is 7. Um, so this is a special case of double displacement where an acid and the base react together together to give you uh, salt and water. When we say salt, it just means an ionic compound produced from that acid-base reaction. So um, let's do an example here. A simple example, we'll do uh, sodium hydroxide. Plus uh, hydrochloric acid. produces water plus um, sodium chloride. It's hard to tell why this is the double displacement. Let me just show you with our chemical equation. So sodium hydroxide is NaOH. Let's make that in solution. Hydrochloric acid is HCl based on your naming of um, acids and bases. Now we're going to produce water and sodium chloride. So uh, the water, I'm going to write it out like this. This is water, H-O-H, -H, liquid. And the sodium chloride is NaCl, aqueous. So notice how the Na and the H switch spots. The Na went to where the, or the H went to where the Na was and the Na went to where the H was. So the H goes with the OH, and that's your H2O. And then we have our NaCl over here. This is a salt. So really what you've produced here is salt water, and that pH is 7. Not all acid bases will get you exactly on 7. Um, not all acid base reactions will get you on, exactly on 7, um, but it's a lot closer to 7. It depends on how, what quantity and proportion you have. But the point is that this neutralization reaction is a special type of double displacement. When you see a base and an acid, there's swapping occurring where you have two compounds at the end, and that was caused by double displacement. So you would call this a double displacement, and then in brackets put neutralization, or just neutralization works as well. Uh, and then the last two uh, type of reactions we need to see are the combustion reactions. There's two types of combustion reactions. There's complete combustion reactions and incomplete combustion reactions. Combustion just really means, you might hear, it sounds like kaboom, it sounds like an explosion. And yes, many times it is an explosion, but it doesn't have to be um, a drastic explosion. Um, but a combustion is when you take a, a hydrocarbon and you react it with oxygen. So it's really burning with oxygen. Um, now, a hydrocarbon is a compound that has basically a bunch of carbon and hydrogens in it, based on the name hydrocarbon. 
So here we have CXHY, but that could be something like CH4. That could be um, C2H6, for example. Uh, so anything that kind of looks like this um, is considered a hydrocarbon. It doesn't only have to be hydrocarbons. You can have stuff that, that's similar to hydrocarbons. We'd call them derivatives. So for example, C6, H12, O6, this is glucose, right? And you could have that and burn that with oxygen. But the point is that regardless of what hydrocarbon you put here, when you make it react with oxygen gas, it's going to produce um, some carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So it's always going to produce that those same products if it's a combustion reaction. When we're dealing with a complete combustion, that means that we have an unlimited supply of oxygen. We're burning the fuel completely. And so this is a complete combustion reaction, complete combustion reaction here. So let's just do an example. We'll do the example with CH4. So CH4, remember, is methane. You could have called it carbon tetrahydride, but we call it methane based on its organic name, plus oxygen. And we're going to do the complete combustion. So that'll make carbon dioxide plus water plus our energy. Uh, and the reason I have these products is because uh, we said that we're doing a complete combustion example. So now I'll have CH4 is a gas. CH4 is actually, if you ever used a Bunsen burner, the methane, the gas that comes out of there is methane. And also cows fart this out. Um, plus O2, remember it's a gas, produces CO2, safe to assume it's a gas. If a lot of energy is released, then our water will be gas as well. It could be liquid. Um, plus energy. So um, for any hydrocarbon that you have, um, or even something like this, plus O2, produces CO2, plus H2O, plus energy. You're always going to get those same products, assuming it's a complete combustion reaction. The only thing that will be different, so you're wondering, well, how, why is it the same equation? Well, it is the same if you don't balance it. But when you balance it, the coefficients will be different depending on which um, which uh, hydrocarbon you chose. We did a balancing example in a previous video um, where I showed you a trick to balancing a combustion reaction that was a bit trickier. Uh, now, sometimes you might get, have what's called an incomplete combustion. You don't always have an unlimited supply of oxygen, and you can't burn your fuel fully. So... The incomplete combustion will start off the same way. We're burning a fuel, a hydrocarbon, with oxygen. It'll produce CO2 and water. But because it's an incomplete burn, there's also going to be some carbon monoxide produced, also some solid carbon produced, which is soot, and then some energy. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do This time we'll do an incomplete combustion. We'll say we're doing methane plus oxygen. Um, will produce, so carbon dioxide plus water plus soot plus carbon monoxide and then plus energy. That was hard to fit all in one line there. Um, so now we can write our uh, chemical equation, CH4 gas plus oxygen, gas, and we'll write in all our products now. So we have CO2 gas, plus water gas, plus carbon monoxide gas as well, plus carbon solid, and then plus energy. So in a question I would have to tell you, I would say it's an incomplete combustion or it's a complete combustion if I were asking you to predict the products. Um, or I would tell you there's unlimited supply of oxygen, there's abundant oxygen, or or um, the, the oxygen is not abundant. So it's insufficient. Um, so here I would say, for example, unlimited supply, or I would say abundant for complete, whereas insufficient for um, incomplete. So those are the main types of reactions you need to know. Synthesis, decomposition, um, right there, which are basically the opposite of each other. Single displacement and double displacement. In single displacement, we saw we have uh, metal kicking out metal, non-metal kicking out non-metal. 
Um, we saw double displacement, where at the end you still have two compounds, it's just that the metals in them switch spots. Um, we saw a neutralization reaction, uh, which is essentially a special case of a double displacement with an acid in the base. And we also saw combustion reactions uh, that could be complete or they could be incomplete um, with hydrocarbons. Uh, we're going to do a few practice problems together now. Uh, let's go to this here. We're just going to classify right now. We're going to work on classifying reactions um, as either synthesis, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, or um, combustion. Replacement, displacement um, is the same thing. So here, let's take a look. We have a metal and a compound, and then we have a compound and something alone. So this here, since we have something alone, again, we have something single still, is a single displacement. So as I go through this, you can pause the video, try it yourself first, and then come and see if you have um, the correct answer. So this one looks like a combustion, but just look at your products first. We only have CO2 produced. So it's two things making one, synthesis. To, for it to be combust combustion, we'd have to have plus CO2, uh, plus water, CO2, and then if it's incomplete, then we might have to have carbon monoxide as well. Um, here we have two compounds, and then we end up with two compounds. It looks like the metal switch spots with the hydrogen. So it looks like we have a double displacement or double replacement as a sheet calls it here. Here we have one compound becoming two smaller things. So we're, we broke this down, so that's a decomposition. Here we have um, CH4 plus O2, gives you CO2 plus H2O, and then it'd be energy, of course, but we didn't put that in there. Um, so this looks like a combustion reaction. More specifically, it's complete. It's a complete combustion. Here we have a metal and a compound. The metals switch spots, so we have a single displacement. Here we have a compound and a non-metal, and it looks like the non-metals switch spots. So we have another single displacement here with non-metals this time. Uh, here we have aluminum and sulfur, two things coming together to make one. So that's uh, synthesis. Sulfur is typically written as S8, but here it was just written as S solid. No big deal for now. Just know they're writing it as S8 if you're writing it out. Um, but right now, just predict that this is a synthesis or identify this as synthesis. Here we have one compound breaking down to form um, two smaller things. So we have a decomposition. And I'm going to modify this last one. I didn't tell you, so maybe after it's modified, you can retry it. I'm going to add plus CO, plus C. And now I want you to classify this. So the way it was before, you would have said it was a complete combustion. So this is still a combustion, but it's an incomplete combustion. There's insufficient oxygen because I added the CO and the C at the end here. So at this point, you should be able to classify all types of reactions. Some of you might even be at the point where you could even predict reactions um, based on your previous knowledge. But right now, it's really about classifying.